Welcome back everyone. As you can see, we finished all of the repairs on the Hobie Cat. So let's take a look at what that process looks like. And going forward in the future, if you'll let me know in the comments down below how I can make these videos better in the future, it's pretty difficult to keep them informative, interesting, and also short because there's a lot of hours of videoing that goes into each one of these videos. And in the next video, we'll take a closer look at all of the delam delamination repairs and not just the one at the right hand aft. Okay, so here on the aft right hole, I'm gonna start doing the delamination pair repairs on one of the smaller areas. So that way I can get a feel for it before I move on to the larger areas where there's gonna be a lot more core and fiberglass materials to pull together over a long length. So to start out, um, I need to drill all the holes to start injecting resin. To do that, I made a little uh, one by one grid template. So these are all one inch by one inch. I don't think I'm gonna put a fastener in every hole, just kind of around the edges and work my way in, maybe every other hole or something like that. So we can see, you know, good squeeze out coming through and we're also not using just a ton of fasteners because I only have a hundred of them and I've already coated them with PVA, which is a water soluble mold release. So when we do bond everything back together. We can just run the fasteners out and run a Q-tip through those holes with some water because PVA is water soluble. We can clean that mold release back out and then pot fill those holes. So the mold release is good so we can actually get those fasteners out and they're not bonded in, but it's also water soluble so it'll be pretty easy to clean up. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and mark out all of the hole locations and then we'll go from there. So I've already kind of test marked some. So for the grid in the future, we're gonna do a two inch by two inch grid with a fastener in every other hole. So while in this video you'll see this specific grid pattern in the future videos, you'll see a two inch by two inch grid with a fastener in every other hole and then an additional fastener where needed. So now that we have the holes mapped out, we need to go ahead and start drilling through the first layer of fiberglass and the core. Um, and the hole should be large enough to fit this little tip into for the syringe. So that way we can inject the resin using a syringe and get some good pressure behind it and spread it out. So you can actually feel when you get through the first layer of fiberglass and then the bit just chews pretty much right through the core. So as long as you feel that first pop through the fiberglass and then you go all the way down till it hits something again, don't push too hard, just let the drill drill itself, let the drill do the work through the core and then just stop once you get through the core. Okay, so now that we have all of the holes drilled, it's time to go ahead and start mixing the epoxy. So for this, I'm using West System. I'm using the 105 epoxy, as well as the 209 extra slow hardener. So with the 209 hardener, this 105 epoxy will take 20 to 24 hours to cure. It's pretty, hot out right now. Um, it's about probably getting close to 85 degrees in the garage. So it'll probably be a little bit quicker, but still it's a full day. 
um, but it does give us like a 40 minute work life. So once we start mixing everything and it starts kicking off, we have about 40 minutes to apply all of the resin and pretty much get it ready to set up. So the other reason we are going with the extra slow hardener is it makes it thinner. So because the epoxy, whenever it's mixed up is thinner, it'll be able to flow into all of those crevices a lot easier. So I'm going to be using the mini pump set. It's the easiest thing to use. I mean, mixing epoxies can be real hit or miss and you definitely don't want the mixing ratios to be off. So now the easy part is just one pump to one pump and it's all the way down. So I'm just using a red Solo cup. I find these are pretty easy to mix in and they're also pretty easy to dispose of. I've got to prime the pump first. All right, I'm gonna start with two. So epoxy cures on an exothermic reaction. So it generates heat as it cures, uh, 44. So I don't wanna to mix too much epoxy at one time because if, it, if you do, it'll start to heat up and it causes itself to cure. So the more it heats up, the more it cures, the more heat it produces. So you can actually like start fires with epoxy by putting too much in one area. And as it starts to kick off, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, so we wanna prevent that and just use what we need right now. We also don't wanna waste too much epoxy. Okay, so that's properly mixed. We'll go ahead and head back over to the boat now. Okay, so now that we're over at the boat, we're gonna work from one side and inject not as much epoxy as we can, but a pretty healthy amount in each location so that way it flows out. But we don't wanna fill the entire cavity because what we plan on doing is we'll run fasteners in the holes and try and pull the, the bottom layer of fiberglass up as we move in because it's gonna be the most disbonded here. So we wanna pull from the better areas and pull inward so that way the fasteners will be able to reach. So to do this, we're going to put the syringe in. Suck up the epoxy like that. Future Jacob here. Um, I just want to say that this was one of the worst repairs that I did, but it's probably the best documented since it was the first repair. As long as you follow the tool tips that I've put in the video, um, drilling out clearance holes so that way the fasteners don't push the laminate apart and then making sure your epoxy is thickened to help fill the voids, your repair should be successful as all of my future repairs were, were very successful and very large. So you'll see that in a future video as well. All right, so this has been curing for two days. It, it feels a lot stiffer, but you can still see, I don't know if you can see, but there is still a little bit of a give to it. Um, there's nothing we can do regardless, even if we want to redo this. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these fasteners out so that way we can clean the fasteners up and recode them for the other areas. Um, and then we'll have to come through and pot fill all of these holes. And after we pot fill the holes, then we can decide if we want to re-inject re this area, in which case I'll have to drill all new holes. So this repair, you can definitely see a lot easier now. There's still quite a bit of voided space in there. 
there's nothing we can do until we pot fill all these holes so that way the epoxy just doesn't drain out. So we're gonna have to fill all of these holes individually with potting compound. Um, they're pretty small, so it's gonna be quite difficult actually um, to make sure that those are completely filled and we don't just get the epoxy draining to the inside. But that'll be done a little bit later. I wanna go ahead and work on the left hand hole at the back and the front area. So I'm gonna go ahead and map those areas out and then we'll start drilling all the holes. All right, so the holes are sanded down now from the first injection. Um, and it's, everything's all vacuumed up. So what we're gonna do now is since we used PVA as the mold release for the fasteners, we need to clean that mold release out in case any got stuck. And PVA is water soluble. So what we're gonna use is use this little straw cleaner and we're just gonna dunk it in water and run it through each hole like so. Um, and we're gonna do this before we go through with isopropyl. Um, so that way when we clean the holes up in the end with isopropyl to clean all the, the remaining dust off, that it should take care of any additional water that's kind of left behind because it'll cause it to evaporate. To fill all of the holes that we drilled, we're gonna use a mixture of epoxy and microfibers, um, no different than before. But in this case, we're gonna thicken the mixture up significantly, not quite to a peanut butter thickness, but a much thicker syrup because we want the material to flow into the holes, but we also want enough body that it closes the hole off completely and doesn't just drain down in. Um, since those holes go all the way through the laminate, if it's too thin, it'll just drain right through the other sides. Additionally, we can add fairing material into the epoxy to make it easier to sand. Thanks for watching guys. If there's anything that I missed that you want to know more about, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to be as active as I can in answering your questions. And if there's enough interest and I need to cover it in a future video, I definitely will.